video I use a VSC to control the front motor on my two wheel drive electric bike. I'll just give you a rundown on how it works first. 72 volts, but it charges to over 80 and discharges 350 amps, which gives you about 28 kilowatts. 35 inch tires, I got these tires free because they've got no grip on them and I have ground the sides off and sort of tried to cut some grip into them. These are way too heavy, I would like to use some lighter tires, but even so, it still works well. I tried to put a bit of a rounded profile onto them. I widened the rear rim, which is aluminium to 350 millimeter. It goes around 70 kilometers an hour. I could make it faster by changing this sprocket to something smaller. You don't really want to go that much faster on this anyway. It's more of a rock crawler or a swamp sort of a bike. Also quite a good trail bike. This whole rear piece is an aluminium subframe. My seat is just some mats glued to it for now. I will make a proper seat at some stage. This one bolt takes the whole subframe cowling off. Before I take that cowling off, I'll show you the two wheel drive setup. I've got a huge breaker in here that switches, which turns on the VESC. This is the throttle for the rear motor. And then on the left hand is a thumb throttle that does the front motor, which is a hoverboard motor, which I am running at 60 volts using the same battery. The VEC steps it down. I'm actually running this at about 3000 watts and it's only meant to run at 350, so I'm like 10 times the power through it. It's probably going to melt it, but we'll see. It's round the wrong way at the moment because I was just like this to, to do setup. This actually spins inside. I'll do that later. And the front wheel is on a bicycle ratchet. So when the back motor overpowers, it'll just roll with no drive. And you just use this motor when you get stuck. I'll run you through the wiring. It's a bit of a mess, but it works. Quick rundown. We've got the 72 volt battery with 350 amp BMS inside this aluminium case I made. Comes out these big positive negative wires to the fire driver controller, ND 96500, I think, something like that. Then a positive negative jump off that. The positive goes through this breaker, the negative goes straight to the little VESC, and then so does the positive. I'll just switch that off for now. The three phase wires come out of the fire driver controller to the QS138 motor which goes through I think it's a 17 on the front and a 52 on the rear that I, I actually made this sprocket I've got another one to replace it I'll show you guys that in a minute there's something so cool about getting your box from PCBWay of something that you've 3D modeled you've 3D printed and designed and then you get to see it in steel Okay, they gave me some stickers this time again, which is cool. And this is the bill here. So this would have been 150 bucks. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's amazing. They got, I got an anodized blue. It came out so cool. That's expensive for a sprocket, but you know, I got some logo. I got their logo machined in there just for a bit of like sponsorship. So imagine trying to machine this, sandblasting it, and getting it anodized for 150 US. You'd never be able to do it. Pretty cheap way to make parts. Correction, it was actually $88 US. The rest was shipping to New Zealand. I'll just give you guys a quick rundown on how you can get these parts yourself. So you go to your PCBWay website, click on CNC and 3D printing. Uh, then click on get instant quote. Click on CNC machining again. Then you've got to click this arrow here. This is where you put in your file. Then once you select your quantity, there's my file there. Once you select your quantity, it'll automatically give you a price straight away in US dollars. So straight away you can tell if it's viable for you to do or not. And then after you've got that, you can just go through and select any other option you want, like what sort of grade aluminium you want it to be, or if you want it steel or titanium, whatever you want really. Then you can choose your finish, if you want it powder coated or sandblasted. Super easy, they do all the work for you basically. 
Then these wires here, some of them go to the Hall Effect sensor. This is the Hall Effects wire, which goes down to the sensor in the back here, which tells these coils when to fire. Got a USB dongle, we've got a hand throttle here with three speeds, and we've got reverse. If you hold that and press that, she goes backwards. High speed is like wheel stands and stuff. And we just got a conventional disc brake up the front, and we've got a left hand rear brake, which has also got a switch on it, which I've wired in so I can um, hook up electronic braking. I've got it disconnected now. I was doing wheel stands the other day and it was interfering. This key here is which switches on the far driver controller. And that's pretty much everything to do with that controller. Let's move to the little VESC. Very similar deal. You've got your uh, big wires here, your phase wires that will that run all the way down through these wires to the hoverboard motor. This also has three Hall Effect sensors in it. Those wires run back to here. Then I have the small electronic throttle. These are like literally like three dollars, these things. This has got a Hall Effect sensor in it as well with a magnet. It just reads how far away the magnet is from the Hall Effect sensor. And that gives you a throttle reading. I wired in this Bluetooth dongle, but it doesn't work. Now the main part of this controller is this plug here you've got to plug this thing into your computer i'll show you how you do that the vsc comes with this cord that you can plug in i've got a bit of an office set up in my boat right now and i'm going to plug in the computer once you have installed the vec tool in the top right corner you'll see you've connected it once you plug it in make sure you've got a good usb connection because i had a lot of trouble with this not recognizing it then select welcome and wizards and click on setup motors foc go through and choose your motor i just chose the general motor and then i go through and choose a bicycle hub motor you can use this for any kind of motor you've got really Go through it, adjust all your battery settings, but this stuff's not really that important either. And this is the most important button really, is run auto detection. And it will figure out what type of motor you have. Once you've got your motor sorted out, you need to click on setup input, which is your throttle. So click on that thing there. Um, it's got to do this loading screen for some reason. Make sure it's all wired up properly. Choose what type of throttle you have. And when you move the throttle, you'll see this top bar move back and forth. The top of the two bottom bars, I mean. There we go. Boom, it's, re it's receiving something. And I think that's it. She should be working now. I actually had a lot of trouble wiring up the throttle. I'll show you how you have to do it. It comes with this pretty good wiring diagram. Problem was, I thought that this was the throttle, this one here, to me it looked like the throttle, but it's not, that's for an RC throttle. What you want is the COM section here, and you want that one, which is a red on my wiring, that one there, ground, which is black, and then the signal wire is this one, ADC1, which is purple. That's how I wired mine up. Took me ages to figure that out. Thank you so much, Matt, for your help. Let's get this sprocket on here. The PCB way sprocket fits perfectly. Nice. I even got the front motor hooked up. It's only got the plastic gear on here so it's going to strip real fast but I just wanted to show you guys. That clicking noise you're hearing is actually the 3D printed gears. I've got some chunks missing out of them from previous tests. I'm surprised they lasted this long actually. You'll see in a few shots I've got my arm in a sling. I'm actually waiting on potentially a shoulder surgery. I just hurt myself at work doing nothing major, grabbing a welder, but I've had previous surgeries on this shoulder and it's just gotten to the point now where I'm in a lot of pain so hopefully I can get a surgery or something happen to get myself back to strength. See if we could do a burnout with this front wheel with the plastic gearing. I'm pretty sure it's going to break, but we'll give it a go, eh? The 
actually doing pretty good. I just bucked the chain off because this sprocket's all floppy. The metal parts will be coming soon and I'll be able to go for a test ride. I realise here you can't hear a word that I'm saying. So I'm whinging about my shoulder a little bit more and uh, saying how I can't ride my motorbike anymore and it sucks. So when my parts come in from PCB Way, I'll get a friend to ride it and test out the two wheel drive. So I'm super excited for that. Thanks you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.